Yeah, so a little bit over a year ago, uh, an existing client who has a, a three captives with us uh, referred over um, a friend of his that was in the senior living, assisted living space, uh, primarily from the Northeast uh, down to Florida and a little bit towards um, you know, the Midwest as well. The issue they were having was A, the pandemic hit their industry um, almost as hard as any other industry out there, the senior living. And um, you know, the bottom line was suffering dramatically, but the problem was we were also in a hard market for their insurance. So they weren't getting any relief on that side yet. You know, the, the enrollment in their, each of their facilities, uh, the amount of beds that were occupied was not what it was pre pandemic. So it was very important to them to, to find a way to cut some costs, um, maybe some retain some costs in doing so, but, but keep the same level of coverage. So they came to us to look at forming a captive for their, um, specifically their professional liability and general liability deductible exposure. It was a significant, it was about a half a million dollars. Um, but when we started to dig into the policies, which is part of our due diligence to just make sure, you know, what's going on, where's coverage exist? You know, where should you maybe get additional coverage or, or where can you potentially cut some costs? We started to look at the you know, the property insurance, for instance, and they, they had a handful of policies where maybe they just needed a couple, one specific for, uh, you know, wind and hail, hurricane areas, and one specific for other areas of the country, as well as they had six different workers' compensation policies. And, and, and we couldn't understand why that was, as well as six different renewal dates. So from an administrative perspective, it, it, it was very cumbersome. Um, so we went in there, we introduced a team that's a sister company of ours in Risk Strategies uh, that was able to, to look at everything, bring in some specialists from certain areas. And even in a hard market, they were able to consolidate policies and show them a double digit decrease in, in, in their premiums. At the same time, the main reason that they came to us in the beginning was to form a captive because, you know, they did have some risk on these policies that was going to go on for some years. Uh, so to be able to form their own captive, retain the risk, take a deduction to their own insurance company, lower expenses to third parties, and then protect the company from years to come, for years to come was, was a significant uh, win for them. Um, during the process of identifying the risks and, and some of the benefits that, that they could um, put into place with, with what we just discussed, we also started to look at their health insurance. And they were with uh, United Healthcare. They had roughly 300 people on the plan and they were coming up on renewal. Um, they provided some documents related to their, their, their claims history because they were large enough to, to get that data. They were, uh, we also got their shock report, which is you know, generally speaking, that's gonna be 25,000 or larger claims. And what we noticed was their loss ratios were about 40%. So they were very profitable for UHC. Uh, I asked them if they'd uh, you know, ever spoken to anyone about um, you know, going self-insured in their medical. And, and he said, no, uh, is that something you guys do? So I introduced our team after he inquired. And what we were able to do is put in place for them a plan where their renewal premium for these, again, roughly 300 employees uh, was about $3 million. Um, that was on the fully insured side. What we placed for them was a partially self-insured plan with a stop loss policy, third party administrator network, the whole deal. Um, and, and the max out of pocket was 1% lower. It's, it's minimal, but that doesn't matter. That's the max where the fully insured was guaranteed. That's what they were going to pay. Um, fast forward now, we're getting close to the end of year one and their loss ratios have stood up. So because the loss ratios have stood up, they're trending towards saving somewhere in the neighborhood of five hundred to $650,000 in year one. Great savings, especially a company that was suffering during the pandemic with, like we mentioned, you know, very, very, excuse me, many open beds. Um, but I believe the, bit, the most powerful thing when it comes to the, uh, the medical side is not just a one-year savings, but you know, most companies are accustomed now to seeing 10, 15% increases year over year on their health insurance spend, uh, where you know, our team is going out to market and we're already getting flat, if not decreases on their stop loss. So it's a win-win. It's win year one, but then your max exposure is going down. 
And then to top it all off, the captive was formed and we're also taking a layer of that exposure that the company has and we're funding it to their own insurance company. So they get the deduction for that, they get to invest the premiums in their captive um, and then grow it over time. So uh, it's been a great outcome for our clients.